This morning, Trump tweeted out or truthed out Mm -hmm. support, support for Pete, making clear he does stand by him. That was very good news for Pete, saying Pete Hexeth is doing very well. His support is strong and deep, much more so than the fake news would have you believe. He was a great student, Princeton, Harvard educated, with a military state of mind. He will be a fantastic high energy secretary of defense, one who leads with charisma and skill. Pete is a winner and there is nothing that can be done to change that. So that's the best thing that's happened to Pete in a while. Mm -hmm. He posted it this morning at 8 Mm -hmm. a.m. And my information continues to be that Pete's got still an uphill battle Mm -hmm. in the Senate because there's probably no way uh, Susan Collins of Maine, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska will vote for Pete. Mm -hmm. And that Mitch McConnell hates Trump Mm -hmm. and is ready to vote no on anybody who's controversial. Mm -hmm. That could include Pete. Mm-hmm. probably will include Pete. And then there's Joni Ernst of Iowa, red state, who says she hasn't made up her mind. She's not yet a no, but I mean, I know her a bit mm-hmm. and she's got a whole career of caring about sexual assault in the military and trying to clean that up. And she herself is a service member. And this is something she's been priding herself on mm-hmm. as a U.S. Senator. Mm-hmm. And this is her committee, the Senate Armed Services Committee. Mm-hmm. So it's her bailiwick. And I don't think she's in love with Pete Hegseth. And I think she actually could be a no, notwithstanding the pressure I'm sure she's getting. She hasn't said no yet, but that would do it. That would kill the nomination. Um, Having said that, there is a groundswell of support for Pete happening right now amongst the troops, which is going to be very hard for any one of those four to resist if it gets loud enough. What do you make of it? I agree completely. And I think, well, there are two things. I was listening to you yesterday and your point about if Pete Hegseth is the next sacrificial lamb, what will happen when RFK Jr.'s turn comes up? Oh boy. Right? Secondly, the way the mainstream media has been reporting upon this allegation of sexual assault is disgusting I listened to you take it apart. I too had read that thing front to back. I love things on paper. Yeah. Police reports, depositions, the color and the detail you get is so vital. And what struck me so much about that, that claim by that woman was she sort of was protesting a little bit too much in her text messages. Oh, Pete Hegseth, do you know who this guy is? I don't know who he is. All the women here are going crazy over him. Oh, he's on Fox News, Fox News. Like, okay, a little bit of fame. She's inserting herself into his attempts to come onto this other woman who wants nothing to do with him. And she's sort of triangulating and trying to become the woman who he selects mm-hmm. to go home with. Mm-hmm. She inserts herself so much that she, he's, he says, she wound up in my hotel room. I mean, there she was. And I think the detail that really stuck out for me, and I think what, aside from trying to cover this up from her husband down the hall with the kids after the interlude takes place and Pete completes the act, the act on her stomach. This is graphic, but this is what it is. This is where we're at. He grabs a towel and he tosses it to her and says, you can clean that up. And that I think was the insult that broke her. Mm. I think that broke her. I think that was like, oh, oh, I was just used. I was just, I was just a warm body. I was the one left at the end of the night. That whole thing front to back stinks to high heaven. Hello, when he didn't flirt with you the whole night, Mm -hmm. when you thought it was in your purview to lecture him on how he treats women. 100%. She's his handler. Right, getting him back to his hotel room at 1.30. When you go into his room on your own Mm -hmm. and have sex with a man who is a stranger to you, Mm -hmm. expect no better. Exactly. Expect no better. And that applies to her and all women. It's not that other women haven't made this same mistake and been treated just as, you know, with the equal amount of disregard. Mm -hmm. But I guess people have to learn this like firsthand because honestly, you're really not asking, you're not demanding to be treated any better if you agree to go into somebody's bed like that. A hundred percent. 100%. And so this rape allegation and that he paid her money to go away, which, you know, the whole thing is just, it's so dispiriting because I do wish we had (laughs) better choices. Mm. You know, it seems that positions like this, positions of extreme power, 
do they tend to attract a certain kind of male Mm -hmm. who is a bit reckless in their personal life, who has an ego that needs to be fed to this degree? I think it's a different thing. I think it's that right now under Trump, we have a few, you know, nominees with questionable pasts. And and with Pete, I will limit my remarks to just the stuff that he's admitted. You know, tri- cheating on all three of your wives is not a badge of honor. Um, but I think that there is something about people who are attracted to Trump and to MAGA that is admirable. That's We like it, but it may come with some scars on the guys and the gals where you're ready to fight, you will fight convention, you will middle finger, uh, even the the Pentagon brass, like F you, I'm not going by your rules anymore. And it does require sort of a rebellious streak, which isn't developed overnight, you know? And so it can come with some bumps and bruises that you wouldn't see on your typical sec def nominee, but net net could be a benefit to your performance in the job. We're just not used to this. We don't usually nominate candidates with those kinds of scars. Mm -hmm. Usually they've been deal breakers right from the get-go. But after we put a commander-in-chief in in place who cheated on three wives, (laughs) we're like, "Eh, you just kind of have to reevaluate whether you're going to continue making these the standards because I guarantee you um, Mark Milley probably has an impeccable past when it comes to wives and like he probably does. We don't care. We're so over him. It's so true. You know, it, the whole, so remember David Petraeus yeah. you know, pushed out over that Rolling Stone expose because he cheated on his wife. Yeah, with, with his biographer. With his biographer, who he called a mentee. And the, like, the thing that, that I take away is I hate the fact that mentee is in the lexicon now. It, the proper word is protege. <laughs> and everyone's has mentee. But regardless, <laughs> Petraeus was like a five-star general. And he was the one everybody thought was going to crack Iraq and Afghanistan, and he he had to be thrown on the pyre because he cheated on his wife, you know? So, listen, I agree. We were so cute back then. I know. Were like, we adorable? Yeah, we were adorable. It It's, yes, I don't think that we should be holding um, whether someone cheats on their spouse as a, as a marker of, are they a great leader? Yeah. More presidents than not have cheated on their spouses. Yes. FDR cheated on his wife. Yes. You know? So- but I do think it's the it's the it's the trail of just sexual predation that sticks with some of these guys. I don't think that Pete Hexeth is in that realm. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wish I think he's done a great job fighting back this week. I kind of wish he would dial back the Jesus Christ stuff. Why? I do. I think it's trying too hard. I think it's not, it's smacks of trying too hard. Does it not strike you as authentic? Not really. Oh, fascinating. I think I think he he believes it, but I think, you know, what would your mother say if you brought a guy like that home? She'd be like, a leopard doesn't change its spots. My mom would be like, he's gorgeous. Well, he's gorgeous. <laughs> he is. He's a really good looking guy. And yeah. Timothy Oliphant should play him in the made for TV movie <laughs> when this is all wrapped up. But No, but if I think about like, would I want my daughter marrying mm-hmm. a man who had cheated on all three of his wives and she was maybe number fourth? No. The answer would be hard no. Hard no. So it's, well, I don't even, I lost my train of thought. No, you're just well, saying like, we're, it's hard because you're, it, it's it's not like you would necessarily bounce him because of the infidelities. Oh, it's the but, Jesus stuff. The, oh, okay. The, okay. So what I think, what's striking me strange about that is I would, I, I think a middle lane approach would be more, would seem more authentic, which is I made some mistakes. I really did. I have been working hard. I believe I have become a better man, a better father, a better husband. No one is perfect. Please, you cannot beat me up more than I've beaten myself up. Mm. Something like that, mm-hmm. you know, but like a sudden rightward turn. But I think it's genuine because mm-hmm. I mean, I know what you're saying. I haven't heard Pete do a lot of Jesus talk. So that was new to me too, to hear him talk like that. But I think what happened was he cheated on wife number two with Jen Roche, the former Fox uh, and Friends producer. He impregnated his affair partner the second wife divorced him as soon as Jen gave birth to the baby. Jen also had, I think, three kids from her. She was cheating as well. Mm-hmm. And um, that can be a catastrophic moment in somebody's I mean, that, no question that was traumatic on all parties involved. And I think that kind of thing can lead to some reflection. Like, And then the mother's email, which was a good email. I mean, I feel like the mom is a good mom. Like, get your ass in shape. I'm ashamed of you. That 
that's good. That's good parenting. Ideally, it happens early in one's life, <laughs> earlier than it did right. with Pete. But I really believe that it could have knocked him straight. And that's when he joined this church. Mm -hmm. And that's when he wound up getting the tattoos. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to tattoo your body like that if you're not actually feeling faithful and connected. So I think there is some evidence that it's legit. Um, and I don't know Pete to be a liar, nor have I seen a past that suggests, of course, while well, he was cheating, he's lying. But I just mean outside of that context, I, he, there's no evidence that he's, he's led a life of deceit outside of this strain of w being a womanizer. Yeah, I think it might just be a personal thing with me. I have found, you know, I'm the product of like 12 years of Catholic school. And I have found the more that people invoke Christ, you know, vocally and often as their personal savior, the like it's usually indicative of something else going on. It, it's oh. there, there, they can be like the, the spy least the lie Christian, thing. exactly. Like the spy the lie thing. They can be the least Christian people and the most rigid and the most ununderstanding of gray areas. Mm. Um, and so that's where for me, I kind of feel like it's maybe he doesn't intend it this way. I certainly give him the benefit of the doubt that it's that it's genuine, but it can feel a bit like shorthand, mm -hmm. like, Trust me now. Mm -hmm. I, I have religion. I found faith. Trust me now. So you're like, whether it's genuine or not, stop mentioning it because it's like, don't use the Lord's name in this context as your like witness of of your character change. It seems like too much. You're it coming on too it, strong. It's a little strong. Yeah. Well, it seems to be working a little because mm -hmm. Trump is, you know, this tweet, this truth social that he posted, he wouldn't have done that if he thought Pete was dead in the water. And, you know, the confirmation hearings have not yet started. Right now, it's not looking like they necessarily will pull Pete before we get there. Right. Um, I'm, I'm also hearing that the Ron DeSantis rumors are not necessarily real, mm -hmm. that there's no goodwill between Trump and DeSantis, though they are now reportedly going to the Army-Navy game together. I don't know when that is, this week or next week. Um, and But there's rumors that the, the DeSantis team they're the ones behind pushing his name and that Trump may be playing with him, but he's not actually going to give him a post like that. That is so funny. And you know, Susie Wiles, who's Trump's chief of staff, mm -hmm. hates Ron DeSantis. Oh, well, there she you go. She worked for him and it, it ended, ended badly. So that's an, another piece of palace intrigue. And then let me give you another piece of reporting that I can give you here. Okay, I want to make sure I get it correct. Um, there is the... Uh, non-disclosure agreement between Pete and the accuser mm -hmm. in that alleged rape case out of Monterey, California. Mm -hmm. And so she came back a couple of years after the alleged, uh, after the, the incident, which was in 17 and, and in 2020, I think they said it, yeah, 2020, she wanted money mm -hmm. to stay silent and he paid it. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the number was, but he paid it. And they, and, and she was required to stay silent about what happened between the two of them. Well, now we see uh, somebody leak a memo to the Trump transition team saying, this is everything that happened. <laughs> Pete's a rapist, right? So somebody violated the nondisclosure and it wasn't Pete. Right. So this woman violated it or someone around her violated right. it. And my experience with these kinds of confidentiality agreements, typically they would encompass anyone you told. You will be quiet and anybody you told must be quiet or you will pay the penalty. Mm. So it's not going to save her if a friend wrote the memo. And by the way, no friend would write the memo to the tra trans transition team without getting the accusers okay. They wouldn't jeopardize right. this woman's money or putting her into the spotlight. Right. There's no way this woman did not approve the memo to the Trump transit, which is a breach of the non-disclosure, right? If this is actually how it went down. So what's happened now, we talked about this yesterday, more and more you have people like Jake Tapper, he was on the air at CNN asking, uh, or Senator Rick Scott, should Pete authorize the woman to break the non-disclosure? You know, you're so upset. These are all anonymous accusers in the press. Shouldn't he let her come out and talk? Which is just such bullshit. You're putting these guys in an impossible position. They get accused of something they say they didn't do. They pay the woman to make her go away so they can keep their Fox News job. Then the woman violates the NDA for to try to tank his chances at secretary, at def, as defense secretary. Then, at, then the response is, well, if you didn't do anything, you should release her from the obligation. Like, what? So anyway, but- an interesting turn last night where his lawyer, Tim Parlatori, went on CNN and suggested that she already is released. She already is released from the nondisclosure and uh, she can tell her story. So I 
reached out to Tim Parlatori myself mm -hmm. today, and mm -hmm. here is what he said. This is on the record. As the settlement agreement has been breached, meaning mm -hmm. by this memo to Trump transition team, she is not entitled to any further payment and is at a minimum liable for the return of the payment made plus liquidated damages. If she chooses to publicly repeat her false claims, there will be an additional cause of action for defamation as well as for the underlying civil extortion. Good, good. I like this a lot. You know why? Because false claims like this set back every true legitimate claim against especially a powerful rich man. And she is doing no favors to her sisterhood, none. And I was thinking the same thing, like, this woman isn't playing chess. What is she thinking? I don't know. Her story is not going to hold up. You know how much my family and I love our dogs, right? Even Strudwick cannot imagine life without them. Can't, usually don't imagine life without them. They have a great life, but some dogs are not so lucky. This is why I'm super glad to tell you about Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, plus cats and horses too. And they provide all the animals with shelter, safety, and most of all, love. They've been doing it now for more than 45 years. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to stay open and giving can bring tax benefits to you too. Speak with your estate planner about how you can grow your estate while helping animals in need. And check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more. We love our Thunder and Strudwick, but would like other dogs who need love to find it too. Visit DeltaRescue.org today to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.